featured Andrew Schultz talking about the Nelk Boy podcast. It's kind of gone by this whole news. I'm kind of late on it, but I just wanted to play this little clip, especially because it's kind of Schultz describing his dislike for the guy, right? For the guy that he kind of dealt with. So um, the whole premise behind it, I'm sure most of you know, Andrew Schultz recorded a podcast with the Nelk guys and it never got published because he had a bit of a tete-a-tete with one of the hosts right the guy that kind of looks a bit dorky right the little jewish kind of kid and um it didn't go so well and they decided to kind of can it and now of course it's kind of come out because another guy associated with nelk decided to kind of talk about it and it became a bit of a thing on socials people were asking them to release it and eventually they did um and basically both sides of the camps have been talking about it and why it didn't come out and andrew schultz has kind of given his opinion as to why the pod wasn't good and why it didn't work in the time and basically saying you know he didn't really vibe with the guys because they didn't really know each other too well and he made this particular point about the guy which i thought would also have some relevance to how people maybe see brendan why some people may not like brendan short and stuff and why they maybe not give him a second chance i think this may be be one of the reasons because if he says i'm familiar you'd be softer but if you think he's trolling the only way to beat him is to and there's a certain level of like you got to be at a level to troll you know like if if charlemagne is trolling me like that and i'm on the breakfast club it's just a hilarious thing yeah but you know i don't think anybody has gone further in entertainment with less talent than this kid <laughs> so it's like <laughs> I'm like don't you think that would be a great way to describe why some people may not just dis- may not may dislike red brendan the fact that he has been able to get so far in his career with, you know, what people would deem to be mediocre talent or not a lot of talent. That might be one way to describe it. Because I think there is an element of that as well included there. Because I think some people maybe see him and extrapolate into their own life and say, you know what? I've seen other people in my own industry, in my own lives, who have basically been able to, you know, skirt by in life not being incredibly redacted but because of the connections and the people that they know they kind of advanced and got further than i did through pure hard work and whatever and talent that i had it didn't really get me too far because i know the right people because i'm sure that happens in green rooms i'm sure there are comedians out there who are you know speaking bad about the guy behind his back just because they know how far he's gotten because of the rogan flipping stamp of approval because we've now seen the two sides of it We've seen how far Brennan's got with the Rogan stamp of approval. And we've also seen how different it is for him out there now that Rogan's moved away to Austin. It's clear that there was an influence there. He definitely did have some, even in Callum as well to a lesser extent, some direct influence as to how quickly he ascended, right? How quickly everything sort of worked out for him. And unfortunately for Brendan, whatever it may be, the gas got to his head and it kind of affected how he kind of moved and stuff and he kind of felt like he couldn't be touched and, you know, bloody blah, 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 could do no wrong. But I don't know. I feel this description of that guy is something that you could easily just put towards the flipping Brendan's kind of trajectory. What do you guys think in the chat? Do you think I'm a bit off there or is that maybe a good way to describe Brendan's, um, why people, some people maybe dislike Brendan. Uh, people are saying here, uh buh, buh, buh. yeah shorts it sucks i hate that dude i hated him from day one <laughs> okay fair play my good errors or final shorts but i said yeah they can see it when people they don't know but when it's sure but it's a good guy exactly there we go there we go Bala. no one actually says that but that's the thing that people don't really want to say aloud which i really don't really can't really get in my head why that isn't the case or why can't some people figure out hey but i think because you know why they don't say that i'm just thinking about it now I think they all don't say that because I think they all secretly we would want what Brendan got because Brendan still to this day, if I'm not mistaken, he still has the highest amount of individual appearances on the GRE, which is insane to think about all the illustrious flipping guests that Brent, that Rogan's had over the years, all the amazing people who have achieved amazing things. Brendan's still the one that's got the highest amount of individual appearances on there. Flipping insane. So I think a lot of these guys would want to be in Brendan's shoes, if possible. They'd want to be in his shoes where they're able to flip in, go on Rogan where they, where, when they want, have his ear and, you know, basically get that rub. So they don't want to say it because they know that, you know, they would want it. And we also know that the truth of the matter is it they definitely did help his career and they would want it for themselves. That's probably why they don't do it. Maybe, I'm not really too sure, but it's kind of given me that kind of vibe overall. Um, what we're saying here, um shorts is a hypocrite he told everyone youtubers future and netflix is dead and special on netflix yeah yeah that was a that was an epic troll though to be fair as well i'm gonna count that as a troll i think he did that really well to be fair um it's just funny that how his fans kind of 
bought all the flipping gas. That's a funny part of it. Um, and as well, I kind of get the feeling as well, similar to maybe he's a bit he's a bit more clever with it. Schultz, I think he's a bit more subtle, but I also get the feeling he always thinks he's a lot more smart than his audience. So, so which probably he is considering how they kind of bought his whole game hook, line, and sinker. Maybe he he's got some truth in it. I don't really know, but. I, I don't really mind the pod too tough. I watch the clips here and there. I can't stand the whole thing overall because of the cackles on the flipping couches, but I watch the clips here and there. They do have some some good points here and there. I saw Netflix and Shorts is even a word. I'm um, Shorts with the third grade right kick. <laughs> I've never liked him, always suspect. And then he proved me right relentlessly. Yeah, Chauvin Shorts sound like a cupcake of Auschwitz guards <laughs> a couple of Auschwitz oh sorry a couple, a couple of Auschwitz guards but they both have British mums still no point here just saying yeah fair play I see what you mean it's just an observation but yeah I think this description of this guy is definitely a description that you could have for Brendan um the guy I'm flipping um what you call it Nelk so yeah big up them for that and RIP to that Nelk kid because he definitely got buried in this flipping clip that Schultz did <laughs> 